and he breaks free down the middle of the field, and that is going to be no one other than K.J. Smith, and he's in for a touchdown. The Bulldog Radio Network proudly presents the Coach Gray Show on 102.7 FM, Carney's hometown radio station. And now, here are the hosts of the show, Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and Coach Josh Gray. Yes, I love the sound of that uh, that little uh, the lead in there. I like that voiceover by the voice of the Carney Bulldogs, Mr. Jim Dickerson, who is sitting right next to me. Uh, I love that KJ Smith touchdown, uh, and KJ's back this year. Welcome to the Coach Gray Show, Coach Gray. Good to be back again. Yeah, <laughs> it is good. Yes. No, it is great uh, to see you. It's always you. great. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I love football. I love Kearney Bulldog football, especially. Absolutely. Yeah, it is so much fun. But as I look at the roster here, I'm seeing so many names that last year, these were good, good players. Some of the younger players, the guys that came back, I think you returned, what, 20, you got 26 seniors now? Or 24. 24, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, a good number of these kids that uh, that played as sophomores. I mean, they lettered, which is a big deal. Which it means they put in the time on Friday under the Friday night lights uh, to become your next year's leaders. And plus, they have the game time experience. I know you guys talked about it last week. And uh, by the way, it's great to be back. Good to see you. Uh, I know. I hated <laughs> missing the uh, the first the first installment of the Coach Gray Show, but. Um, and I know you guys covered it a little bit, but as we were talking off the air, uh, we talked about the sophomore. Uh, was it wasn't Jake? Was it Jake Lowry? It was uh, one of the, one of the speedy guys, Joe Marshall, who who covered in the playoff game against Winnetonka. Jason Essex, who is a Division One player, he's a senior at Winnetonka. That's right. We'll face him again this year. Hello. But you had a, a sophomore cornerback that covered him, I'm going to say nearly stride for stride, in the playoff game against Winnetonka that we won, by the way. Thank you very much. And uh, what does that say about you know where they are this year? I realize that was then, this is now. I get all that coach stuff. <laughs> But I, I need you to just, just you know, pump me up. I missed a little of this last week, you know. Get me excited. Get me, as, as if hey, I'm not already uh, excited. I can tell. You yeah, no, that's great. We're excited. We, uh, you know, um, talking about briefly about our guys that are coming back, you know, um, uh, Marshall, Joe Marshall, specifically talking about him. Uh, you know, we had a bunch of young, we had a few young guys last year. Uh, step up into some positions. Um, he was one of those sophomores that, uh, like you said, went stride for stride um, and is really... Uh, with a D1 with player. A D, yeah, yes, he's, yeah. Co he's committed to Iowa State, we think. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. So, you know, we have a lot of confidence in those guys and um, a lot of our young guys that have that have, have developed over the summer um, have done a tremendous job in preparing themselves uh, for Friday Night Lights and the guys that are returning. And, and we've got uh, quite a few guys that are returning that have a lot of experience um, on both sides of the ball and special teams as well. So, you know, we're, we're fired up, you know, we talking about um, being Friday night ready and, and under the lights and, and getting that kind of, you know, that, that says a lot about our, uh, about our guys that, you know, the return that are coming back uh, from already kind of been there, done that and getting that, you know, big game or any game on a Friday night right. for that matter, that kind of done um, out of their system and, and kind of the awe uh, from a for an, from a Friday night experience, right? I think uh, you know one of the things I think particularly at the high school level. It, it, it look, it, there, there's going to be times in in games in high school games where one team is just clearly dominant, and and they're loaded with you, you know deep and great athletes and so on and so forth. And we could look around the city here uh, in in the metro area, and we could pick out a few schools, and we could say there's a pretty good chance that if we played Rockhurst. That it might be a, t a little bit of a tough night, you know. I mean, and that's an extreme example. I think our guys would be ready to play. I think they would too, and that's what Without I wanted to talk about because I think there is uh, there there, and that's what I saw last year. I saw a very young team, by and large, a, a, a very young team, right, uh, who faced 
uh, very difficult opponents, and not the least of which was Winnetonka. I mean, and, and that, that, that team, the, the Bulldog team, faced an incredibly talented. That talent on Winnetonka, they were loaded, and it was, there was no doubt about it, and they were loaded with athletes. I mean, kids who could, who could fly around the field, run, catch, hit. And, they, I mean, these guys were good, and they were well coached. But to see these young guys just get in there and play, I mean, ball, to the very last play of the game, when when who? Braxton Breedlove knocked down a pass. <laughs> remember this? Uh, oh, I remember. And, and that, was, that I remember. was the end of the game. Yeah. And we walked away victorious, which was just such an exciting moment for this football team. You know, and then, not to cut you off. No, but, go ahead. You know, I'm, just, I'm think, just having fun. No, here. I think, you know, a lot of it, our guys don't know how to quit. You know, they... They, they're they pretty resilient. They battle back. They don't give up. I mean, I think that says a lot about their determination, their work ethic in the off season, and the things that they go through and that, that we put them through in preparation for those things. And, and it, it's a testament to them and our kids. I mean, they do a great job and a testament to our coaches and, and getting the guys prepared and ready to go on a on a Friday night or a right. Monday or, when, you know, whenever you play. I mean, that's that's what it's about. And, right. and that preparation – and that determination and their willingness to to be coached up and to and to execute, you know. Now, also, there's sometimes that the things don't go our way. Well, that's that's going to be anything. That's football. Yeah. The key is is that you don't let those kind of determine who you are and what you're mm-hmm. going to do. You come back the next play, the next series, whatever that next situation is, when you've got an opportunity to a redeem yourself or to to step up and make a bigger play. And and our guys do a great job of that, and they understand, you know, working together, and it, it's. You know, one guy's, you know, maybe his weakness is another guy's strength, and that's what it takes, right. you know, for a team to go from being a good football team to a great football team. Well, okay, and so, so from that, good that, to great. So right. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff there that, you know, that it's on our kids and, and their ability to to know what they're good at and what their buddy or the guy next to them's good at. And where weakness lies in between, because we all have weaknesses. Not everybody's going to be great at everything, right? I mean, I, I, I agree. But... I mean, well. <laughs> For most of us, <laughs> some, some of us just aren't any good at anything. Yeah, well, but I, well, there's it, always room for improvement. And now, don't don't go getting humble on me. But this is where coaching comes in, where you know you may be a, a man, man for man. And I think the the good example we have is uh, what we were just talking about: Joe Marshall versus Jason Essex. Uh, and I'll stop talking about him here in a minute. But <laughs> Essex, that is. But I'll talk about Joe Marshall forever. That's okay. But, I'll be talking but, about breed love, right? For a minute. And and <laughs> and you have you, you put Good. you put one guy against another, and it's it's this, this man on man competition that clearly you you game plan for, and that all it becomes a part of it. But somehow, some way, this young man, Joe Marshall, rose to the occasion. Now, what was it that he did, coaching wise? Because pound for pound, and I, and I think experience levels uh, all taken into to account, you might have given the, the advantage to Essex. But Marshall ran and kept with him. Talk to me about coaching, about how he stayed in that game and kept Essex out of it, frankly. Yeah, I mean, and, and it goes to Joe. And I know that, you know, I think for him, he's, See, you went he's a great – on me. He's a great – I mean, Joe is a good athlete. He's a great athlete. Uh, that's right. And yeah. he's fast yes. and he's smart. He's a smart football player. Um, and I could talk about every single one of our kids that way. I mean, our, our kids are pretty smart, right? Um, and, and they understand what it is that they're trying to be coached. And our coaching staff does a great job. Coach Wendell um, prepares those the, – the defensive backs, our corners specifically – um, Coach Wendell does a great job in breaking down, and it comes down to a lot of his technique. Um, if you can out-technique somebody, obviously speed um, plays a big part of that as well. Um, but the technique and the things that you do, those little minor things, um, are end up showing up in a big-time situation. If you're playing the correct technique and you're doing the things that you need to do. And, and you know, our guys are very coachable. They want to be coached up. They want to get coached up the right way. They want to they want to learn more about what they need to do better. Um, and film is a big piece of that. And you know, hats off to Coach Wendell. And I mean, he does a he does a great job in getting our secondary ready and um, specifically the corners. I mean, they, you know, it, and it becomes confidence. I mean, yeah. confidence in your ability and 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 trusting what you know and then applying that. Um, and not letting you know, because obviously, like you said, on a, as a as a corner, you're on an island by yourself. Right. I mean, you make a mistake, and 
the whole world sees the D lineman or a lot. You know, there's other guys behind that kind of uh, can make up for for something you don't quite see. Yeah. And you know, you got to have a short memory as a defensive back yeah. and specifically as a corner. And you know, um, our guys do a great job of all right. It's the next play. Let's play yeah. the next play. If something doesn't go our way, how are we going to fix it? We got to have a short memory and get back after because they're going to either attack you again or, I mean, they're going to keep coming. I mean, and that's offensively and defensively. So um, our guys do a great job of, of being coachable and um, are, are pretty resilient and, and trust themselves and um, have, some, have some good confidence about themselves and what they're able to do. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, a big shout-out to the entire coaching staff of the Carney Bulldogs because, yeah, we, we see it. We see these guys. We see the dedication. And, uh, yeah, our listen, staff does a, you know. Sometimes it's more it, than a full-time know, job, it, isn't it? It, it? it is a little bit sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, I think, you know, our guys, they want, they're in this because they love working with kids and they're, they're wanting to help develop. They want to build those relationships with their kids um, and and help them out as they, as they go through. And football is a great way uh, to do that, and our staff puts in a lot of time breaking down film, just getting everything ready to go for the week and, you know, through the weekend, um, getting the game plan ready together and in the, in the evenings and, and watching film and trying to get our kids coached up to the best of their ability to, to go out there so that they're ready to go and feel confident in what we're doing. And um, so our coaching staff does an, an amazing job. and they, They're a great group of guys, um, great role models, and, and are um, definitely dedicated for sure. Uh, right, and uh, you talked about your offensive line, which I think is terrific. And I know you guys, and, and forgive me, I I wasn't here. I didn't get to play last week with you guys, but but it was two weeks ago. We've covered that. Oh, Jim. please continue. Thanks, thanks for just stopping the show, Jim. This, this is what you're good at, right here. Just derailing a a really good show. That's Jim Dickerson, right there. Yep, that's what they paid me for. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm 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 what they call adversity. And then uh, they throw me out there, and then you have to respond to adversity. I think I did a pretty good job of that (laughs) just now. All right, back to this question that I had. And there was a young man here. He's 6'10". He's 280. He's on your offensive line. Who am I talking about? Uh, hmm. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Just kidding. Just kidding. Keenan McNally. Yes. Keenan McNally. I remember watching. He's hard to miss when he's standing along the sideline. Yeah. Yes. He is. He's a he's a big rascal. Plus, he played basketball. That's right. Right. Big basketball player as well. All right. Now this guy came in. uh, He wasn't ready at the beginning of the season last year. He wasn't ready for, I don't think, for a starting position. Am I wrong in saying that? And I'm, there's nothing against the kid. No. I mean, but, everybody develop. I mean, that, Yes. And that's the thing. Everybody develops, and they go through the process. And I don't know we've talked about the process of, you know, getting better and kind of understanding things and, and how we operate and how uh, things uh Go right. along. I mean, right. with a lack of better words, just, but this just is being a good, game ready. And, oh, okay, this and he's is a, a good prime example. example. And he is a prime example yeah. of that. And um, you know, Keenan has come a long way, not uh, maturity wise, um, and and how he plays the game, just in maturity wise, and how he looks at at film, how he's coached, and how what he does, and everything that goes along with that. And and that's a testament to him, and kind of flipping that switch and that. Right. And that's the fun part, right? When you, when all of a sudden the light bulb goes on, and and you're able to see and and building that confidence in yourself uh, when you're playing the game, and and Keenan is a prime example of that. And there's uh, a lot of guys that that go through that, and and Keenan, you know, wasn't ready, but then it it about, kinda, about it. halfway bing, halfway through, you know, mid, mid, it, midway it, through the fine. season or so, yeah, yeah. He, he came on strong and At right tackle, as, yep, as I recall, yep, yeah, and yeah. and has done a done a great job in yeah. in preparation for his senior year, and and is. Right. And looking forward to him uh, tomorrow night. Did, he, did you get him in the weight room over the summer? He's been in the yeah. weight room. That's what I'm talking big about. Big guy, yeah. The big guy gets in the weight room. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, and I think that for him, that was a big part of it. Yeah. And that's and learning the weight room and what what you need to do in the weight room. And you know, our guys buy into working hard. And you know, the key there, you know, everybody works hard, right? I yeah. mean, I know we work hard. We push our guys in the weight room and the conditioning and and everything we do in the off season. Uh, but now it's it, it becomes a point, okay, how do you translate that hard work from the weight room and the workouts to production on the game field? Yep. You know, and, and Keena kind of 
kind of flipped the, the switch with that and nice. uh, has done a really nice job. No and, doubt about and that. And we're looking forward definitely to, to him and, and the rest of the O-line and, and guys to, to go out there and, and get it get her done. Let's take a break. We're going to come back and talk to Coach Gray some more. You're listening to the Coach Gray Show, and I am so happy you are with us. Stay right along with us here. We'll be right back. Listen to these messages because these are some good sponsors. Making our programming possible on KPGZ are these fine underwriters. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees, Flowers, and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees, Flowers, and Gifts, 100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811, and their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. So there I am right there. Thank you, Brian. Oh, uh, Jim. So look at Jim to run, trying to run the show here. I saw that. Uh, well, I could so see get, the, the mics weren't on, and I was like, oh, hey. Probably a good thing. Uh, there, you know, sometimes, you, well, I won't even get into that. But yeah, that's pretty, we keep those mics off for, for a reason at time. You know what I mean. Right? <laughs> Brian's shaking his head, yes. That'd be my fault. <laughs> ah, I'm we the are, reason uh, we turn those things off. The, well, generally, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh uh, my before gosh. you get into yes, uh, I, I won't get into a thing because you're going to get into that. Two things: number one, breed love. Um, <laughs> although the 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 block pass was instrumental, key it was exciting. I still think a, like a 62 yard field goal would have been a a nice way to cap things yeah. off. Yeah. So I expect to see that this year. We'll see what we can do. No pressure, <laughs> Mr. Breedlove. Moving on. I He's got guy. ice in his veins, baby. <laughs> I can he see He has got that. ice in his yeah. veins. It doesn't phase him. Um, that's interesting because I have ice in my brain. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, a room full of people right here that, that share would, that would problem. Would yes. <laughs> I have the same uh, affliction. I did have I did have somebody who asked me um, the other day, and then they, they were asking, because this went way above my pay grade, which, by the way, is not difficult. But um, <laughs> they were asking about how teams are selected and i know we've talked about this before but how teams how it's selected who carney plays and who they don't play and how the divisions because you've got you know platt uh, county smithville liberty then you get staley in there and you start to get pretty wide depth of you know players and all that sort of thing so how's that kind of divvied out and who plays who and that sort of thing yeah that's through our through the uh through the suburban conference sets our schedule so uh, we're fortunate they they kind of get in a war room, I guess, and kind of sort out a matrix of all the suburban schools and um, and kind of set the schedule that way. Yeah, and I think what really brought this to light, honestly, with this guy was that I, I don't know if anybody heard it, but this that ESPN thing where you had two teams that were playing that oh yeah that were should have never been on the same field. I mean, it was like fifty three to nothing, right? The, second quarter or something right. and i mean it they, it they were really in danger of hurting somebody because one team was clearly well above the other but um 
Yeah. So they, is there any, do they ever talk about changing it to kind of mix things up? So, so they usually every two years, they look at the conference um, and set the conference. You're, you know, the suburban blue is what we're in. They look at that. They look at numbers. They look at enrollment, how big the school is, is the big is the school, you know, is the district growing and, and they kind of, everything comes down to basically a, a number. And that's kind of the same thing that they do um, with your district as well, as far as, uh, size of school is how they kind of set that up. And then, you know, you typically will play some, like for us, 4A, we play some 5A schools or, um, and then your 4A schools and 6A will play some 5A and, and they kind of balance it that way. And they look at, you know, where you're at, um, as far as a, a program, I believe. And, uh, they take it into consideration or a lot of different things into consideration. I believe when they, when they look at the schedule, yeah, and I think it's it's interesting. I think we may have talked about this before, but when like you and I were kids, you went to school where you went to school and you lived where you lived. There are people now who actually move right specifically. Oh, no because doubt about it. I want my kid to go right. here to play here and do that. That I mean, we would have never done that. Back with with the parochial schools, you can make that choice no yeah. matter where you live. Right. But, but now but, there are. You're right. There right. are school districts where parents will will move. And we would have well, never let's done just that. Just be honest about yeah, it. Yeah, we would have yeah. never done that. Yep. In, when we were kids, yep. I mean, no, we didn't. I mean, twenties and 30s. no. Uh, I, I saw it when leather helmets, <laughs> right? Exactly. We fold, folded our helmets up yeah, and folded, just, put in your back wait, pocket, yeah, and wait, 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 got on a bus. You guys wore helmets. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of guys on here I wanted to talk about too, and I know you talked about them last week, but we're going to do it again. Um, 511, 190. Number 42, K.J. Smith. Yeah. Uh, running back and linebacker. Now, And he did terrific at both positions. But I think there was a game that he just took control of at running back last year, and I don't remember what it was. It was a home game. And uh, he just absolutely uh, – he was well over 100 yards. And that's – you yeah. know, with K.J., yeah. you, get, you get effort, you get uh, leadership, you get the – you know, he translates that hard work outside of – of practice and, and outside of what we do and, and goes on his own and, and does work, you know, and, and puts time in um, and is constantly uh, wanting to watch film and, and uh, what, how can he, what can he do to get better? What does he need to improve on? And, you know, KJ is, uh, is a great leader on our team. Um, he's kind of the guy that, you know, uh, we've got a lot of great leaders, but, you know, I think talking about KJ, he just, he's got that, just that kind of charisma about himself that, that he's got, you right. know, he, he's able to draw the guys the in. Leadership and, and is, that is, leadership is, piece. It's earned. It, 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 right. It, yes. And so when he talks, you know, it's, it's listen, you know, and um, he, he does a, you know, we're had a great summer um, and really put himself in position to have a great senior year. Yeah. Um, really excited to watch him play. You know, it's, it's been, what beginning of June since we've, you know, at Northwest team camp, since we've, you know, been able to go up against somebody else, a different team and right. uh, our guys are ready. And, and, and KJ's is one that's, um, you know, we're excited to watch play and mm -hmm. uh, on both sides of the ball and, and, and see what he's, you know, take off where he left off from last year. And so, so and, he, and he's your, like, he's your starting running. Yeah. Back. Uh, I, I look at a guy like that. And, and by the way, um, last year I noticed that you started playing, guys on both sides of the ball now I, I, was that a new development refresh my memory yeah we've got some we've had some uh, guys that that are playing on both sides mm -hmm. um you know it's it's making sure we get the right guys on and you know letting some of our younger talent develop and yeah. and when they're ready then we're able to 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 get those guys on the field as right. as uh as needed on that and, yeah and i think you want to put your, your talented guys out there your most talented players out there and you know with, with that you know the guys that that you know may uh work in they, they've got to be ready as well they've right. got to um be be ready to go on a friday night sure. and, and get them some experience and you know that's always what we're striving for but we also don't want to put somebody in a in a bad situation on right. a friday night out in in the lights and yeah. and and getting getting going so um we've got some younger guys that that are definitely showing uh, a lot of progress, and and are very excited about that. Specific to any position. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Very good. Well, that's cool. Uh, who else you got at, at uh, running back then that 
that you can so talk about. So we've got we've got uh, Jake Gregory as a senior as well. He's right. been he's back this year. Another fast guy. Another fast guy. Yeah. You know, I think for him, he's he has uh, you know been been working through things and and getting things where where he understands and is is definitely showing some progress um, as he goes through. Cameron Emmons is another one. Uh, he's a sophomore uh, this year who's got a got a great future ahead of him as well. And um, you know, with with guys going both ways, or if you have some guys going both ways, those guys that are are pushing them and and uh, working their way up through it, it becomes even more pressing that that they need to be ready to go because you never know when your number is going to be called and you got to go in and you got to be ready. And um, when those guys, you know, then when we feel comfortable with that, then that's that's when they get those opportunities to, to show that, that they are ready. Right, exactly. Uh, we talked about K.J. Smith at, uh, at linebacker. And uh, help me out again on some of the other linebackers. Darren Langford yeah. is one. You know, talk about Darren. Darren is a uh, – trying to find the right word for Darren. He is a gritty – He's not, not a big physical. guy. They got him and listed he, at he, five, five, seven, one seventy five. He's taller than that. Okay. He's taller. He plays uh, a lot taller than that. I'll tell you that. Well, right that's now. what matters. And he it, flat gets after it, and 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 it's funny because, you know, yeah, he may on the on the on the roster may not be the biggest kid, but he plays bigger than what he is. Love it. He's smart, physical, um, has got a motor, um, and earned a spot last year at one of the linebacker spots, and has done. And this has never looked back, and has just really done a great job in this offseason, leading the defense, being coachable, and and understanding what we're trying to do. And um, you know, we we try to keep things pretty simple on defense. You know, play fast, play hard, get to the brown ball. Right. I love that. That's pretty. You know, that's that's the bottom line. Why complicate it? Don't complicate things up. Right. Go find the brown ball and yes. get there in a hurry and arrive angry. And <laughs> he does a great job of that. <laughs> he does a great job of that. Yes. And. But with that being said, he also is, is smart enough. Coach Brinkley works with our inside li- with our linebackers, and you know he is thirsty for n- more knowledge and and does a great job. And we're excited as heck to to see him uh, get going again this year. Um, Braxton Bree loves back on the linebacking yeah, court as baby. well. Um, you know he's kind of kind of that Swiss Army knife of right. linebackers. He can play an outside guy. He can play an inside guy. Um, Obviously, is I don't know if you know or not, but he does kick the football as well uh, a little bit. Uh, he was asking Jim that question. Who's this guy again? Braxton Breedlove. Breedlove. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look that. He's way. another one. You might just check him out. You know, yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yes, but but clearly qualified to play the linebacker position. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I wor- honestly, I worry about. It. I was like, I don't know that guy because he's a pretty good kicker. Yeah. Do we want to we want to risk that guy at linebacker? Absolutely. Yes, we I mean do. he's an athlete. You know, yes. uh, football players. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, we got to play football. I mean, kickers have got. We got to be able to be. You know, use our guys. And, right. You know, another one that we moved um, played our fullback position last year. Our bully back was kind of what we call our fullback right. position. I remember that. Um, was uh, Will Lincoln. And oh, yeah. Will is playing kind of uh, – has been playing our Mike linebacker uh, and has really uh, gravitated to that and has really picked that up. And is, uh, he's kind of like that uh, – he's a linebacker. He's he's a linebacker dude. I mean, he's – you know, when he, he's got that, you know, that fullback linebacker kind of yeah. guy, you know, he's – Well, like the, the play angry, yeah, as you say. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he's physical right. and – you know what you want out of out of out of well any football player. I mean, right. when you're playing physical, you're 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 getting after it. You want to yeah. play play you know with a little chip on your shoulder. And yeah. he does that and has really stepped into that and really done a nice job um, through the through the summer and 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 as we've gone through uh, practice this 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 early fall. You you love seeing uh, a linebacker that can be an intimidator. Yeah, you you, you <laughs> love a guy. He's got you, a presence, you, you, know, you know exactly yeah, right. Got a presence, if you're on that offensive up. line, or if you're the the running back that has to pick that guy up on a blitz on the opposing team, right? You want him to think about it. You want yeah. him to know. Our guys do a good job. Yes, you know that, that we're coming after you. They're not afraid. Right. They're not afraid. I, I could, you know, that they're they're not scared. They're not going to back down. We're going to get after the ball, and we're going to, you know, bottom line, sick them, get after the ball. Make it hurt. 
<laughs> uh, let's see. One other. Well, no, there's several others I want to talk about. And I'm having so much fun doing this. Who did I have? Oh, all right. This guy, Zach Grace. Wow, 6'3", 230? Yeah. Good grief. The offseason was well. I guess so. It went well. And he's a junior. Yeah. He and started he, last year. Quite impressive as a tight end. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because he had the, uh, as Jim and I were calling these games, and we'd look out there and we'd go, you know, he just looks like a tight end. <laughs> And I think he had, was he number 87? Yeah, he was yeah, 87. Yeah, which helps. Yeah. It helps a lot if you're a Chiefs fan. And you know what I'm talking about. Is he, is he 87 again this year? He is not. Oh, oh. He is Something not. Else. See Something if you can I find got, he's I got said, another I mean, number. I got him at number 14. There you What's go. he doing? He, he's not a quarterback. It's a quarterback <laughs> number. 14? That, yeah. It's a quarterback you, number. Yeah. Now it's something else I got to That's Zach Grace's oh. number. Oh, it's Zach. Yeah. Oh. Come that's, that's, on, buddy. That, that's what he's got. You know, All he, right. You, you may see him on the defensive side of the ball a little bit, too. And, okay. You know, he's uh, he's done he's done really well and, and, and expanded on his knowledge of the game and his ability and, you know. Here's what I know. And he's the, a fun kid. He uh, just, he's I can a imagine. fun I kid. He's quiet. Really? For, he's he's kind of a quiet kid. He just gets his work done and those are the ones you have to watch. <laughs> goes goes a, goes about his business catching the football or making a tackle or, yeah. or blocking and goes about his business and 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 just does d- dominates. He, he looked big last year. I mean, when I would see him, he always got open. Yeah. I mean, I would see him wide open. And I would and I'd be thinking, well, he doesn't look he looks he looks big. To be that guy that got himself clear of anybody within, you know, ten feet of him. Yeah. And uh, and then guess what? He can catch the football. He's got soft hands. Yes. He's got soft hands. Yes. And I mean that's a threat. Not to mention the fact that you've got a guy that size that can do what? Knock somebody down in the secondary. Yeah. He he's not afraid of contact. Yeah. <laughs> when he catches it, man. You know, sometimes. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to put your shoulder down right. and, you know, just get after it. And he's he's not afraid of that. <laughs> yeah. But he also has some. He's he's pretty agile and and moves around obviously well in space and uh, can break some ankles as well. Well, that says a lot too. But sorry, Jim, I was, oh, I was just going to say good. real quickly that because uh, I'm going to give these guys full credit on the offensive line. I know we've got some some good athletes yeah. there this year. Had had good ones there last year. And I'll, every year, I think. Oh, I don't see that many big guys coming back. And, of course, the next year, it's like, oh, those, they did. They grew up over the summer. There they are. They're big. But they're also good athletes, and they're very smart. And uh, let's talk about getting those guys downfield to block, especially for a guy like Zach Grace. Yeah. Get him downfield and uh, e- either a, 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 those crossing patterns or, or short routes and getting somebody down there to block. Yeah. What yeah. about those that O-line? Our, uh, our kind of tip of the spear with Luke Starr at center, he's back. Um, this year um, has been a great leader this offseason, been a great leader for the O-line and, and for the team. I mean, he's got a, a great presence about himself. Um, he's smart. He's another, you know, I, I guess I could put myself on repeat and say, you know, a, a kid that, that thirsts for knowledge about the game um, and is coachable and, you know, physical kid. And, you know, he, he's a he's a, a true O-lineman. Um, to heart and and loves his craft of of being that center and, and the, kind of that tip of the spear and he does a uh, a, a great job of leading those guys. Is, is uh, he related to Mary Beth Stone? Yes, there it is. Yes, Mary and, Beth. Yes, and she. Mike is making the connection. Well, <laughs> you know what? I, you, you spend enough time in front of this stuff and uh, you, you start to remember it. And I know we, we work together on the uh, your virtual. Awards presentation. Yeah, yeah. Last year. So, right, I, I, right. so many of these names and faces, I was able to really look at as we were editing. Right. And you, you, they kind of stick with you. Yeah. So, and hats off to Mary Beth Starr. If she's your quarterback club yeah. person, yeah, yeah, yep. she's the, she's, she's the president of the quarterback. There you go. Well, <laughs> yeah. you gave a big shout out to Mary Beth. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for having such a talented son. Yeah. And sizable too, by yeah. the way. <laughs> this guy's six feet two forty five. Yeah. He's All right. he's a big rascal as well. And I don't know. You know, uh, so he's on one spot. We got Keenan. We talked about. We've got um, Briggs Terwilliger. Love uh, that name. Yeah. You know, he is a. He's been a guy that kind of goes both ways. Will play some defense and and play some guard. And you know, want to talk about an athletic um, uh, lineman. I mean, just the way he moves and gets off the ball and 
you know, is in your face and, and, you know, doesn't back down. I mean, I could go on and on, but I mean, he just is very, uh, very another physical kid that, that does a, does a great job and another leader on our team. That, Let, that, let's that come shows back. It. Yes. I'm gonna, we got to take a little break here, coach. And I want to get Fair to enough. all of our sponsors and I want to come back and talk about that. Finish talking about these offensive linemen and, and some of your D linemen as well. You are listening to the coach gray show, or you might even be watching the coach gray show on Facebook live. Come right back. We'll have more. Stay with us. Corporate underwriters of KPGZ programming include these fine businesses. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees Flowers and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees Flowers and Gifts, 100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811, and their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. Welcome back to the Coach Gray Show. It is wonderful having you here, Coach. And uh, we've got a game coming up, folks. This is Friday Night Lights. We're going to be away at Platt County, who is coming off a loss to Park Hill South, 42-14. to 14. Wow. Uh, my goodness. Don't let, that, don't let that deceive you now. No, no, no. I, I, I get it. Uh, but, but uh, you know, it kind of it did surprise me initially. Sure. I mean, that's a big gap. And, I, and this is a good team. And they're Class 5, by the way. Right. They're in our conference. conference, but not our district. That's right. And that's the difference. We're Class 4, a district. Eight. That's correct. Yes. yes. That's correct. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we can talk a little bit about that, but we, I, I would like to, to kind of finish out this offensive line. These guys don't get enough shout-outs, in my opinion. Right. And uh, listen, uh, regardless of what K.J. Smith is capable of doing, he can't do it. Without the big boys up the front. The big nasties up yeah. front, you know. I, you know, uh, talking about Briggs and, and right. finish up, you know, with him. I mean, he's a great leader, um, a physical, talented, athletic. I mean, and and has done, you know, uh, had some injuries here and there throughout his career. And, you know, we are very excited to get him back on the field and, and get, at, get back out there for his senior season and, uh, show what he's capable of doing. He's he's a re- remarkable young man, and um, very 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 excited about that. Connor Smith um, is another one at, that has been uh, at one of our guard positions, um, opposite of Briggs. Uh, you know, Connor, I think is another person, I, and I know I talked about it before about um, kind of trusting the process, and and uh, I talked about uh, uh, Drake Cole being one of those guys that come through the program and. And had learned, and, and Connor's is very similar to that, and and you know maturing, and understanding what he's got to do to be on the football field, and and has and has had a great great off season, and 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 so far um, as we've gone through everything thus far with with in practice and and the summer, and has really um, worked to earn earn what he's getting, and 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 that's what you want. You want to see those guys and. Your younger guys, you know, that maybe they're not starting as a as a senior or as a junior, or um, sometimes not even later until you're a senior, where you all of a sudden things work to where 
where you get in and you get it. And, yeah. and where you get it and and Connor um has has done a good job and we're excited about him and and what he brings to the table and he's not a um you know standing next to Keenan McNally is is probably not a very good <laughs> good idea as far as looking at height but 610 yeah <laughs> what Connor does yeah. though is you know he makes that he's a very strong strong player um and he's physical and that and that's what you want whether that's the O line or the D line um, and and is and gets after it. So you know he makes up for that with his size, with his strength and his ability, and he's he's really shown uh, a lot of positives so far. So uh, anxious to see that 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 piece go in um, as well with him and um, uh, kind of take over that guard position. Cole Williams is another one that's been working in there, um, who's who's got got you know a lot of uh, has improved a lot and has got got some talent that. That we just need to continue to see, and and as we go through that, because, you know, I, you know, what we're in now is, you know, you never know what's what's going to happen here or there, and you never know when you're going to have to step up and 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 be that Friday night guy. And you know, we coach Backus, who coaches the O line for us, is, does a great job with those guys and and building their confidence and and coaching them up. And you know, it's not just getting off the ball and blocking that guy. I mean, there's a lot right. to it. And Technique, like I said before, is so key um, uh, at any position. Right. Um, let alone the offensive line. And you know, a misstep here or there, you know, a fraction of a second makes a huge difference yes, in what you're doing. It's and, a fast game. And everybody's got to be, you know, on the same page. And um, so he's done a good job. We're looking forward uh, to getting him out there as well. Um, at our other tackle spot is Carter Schmidt, um, who was a junior. Um, he had he got in against uh, played against uh, Smithville last year in the district championship game and he's another big tackle um, on the opposite side of Keenan and and has really grown and well he's a junior yeah he's yeah. a junior oh, okay um, has really grown and and done a great job and you know you want to see you know you never want to see a, a docile guy and. On, on, when you're playing football, it's just not the way the game's played, right? right I mean, it's a physical right. contact collision sport, and you know our guys up front do a great job, and and Schmidt has done a done a done a great job this off season and and putting himself in position uh, to be on the field, and we're looking forward to to him uh, out there as well at that tackle spot. Maverick Goodman is another one that's been working in um, at the offensive line and has really good grief. Really, he's, a, he's another big junior. Yeah. Six, big, six, two twenty. He's a big rascal as well. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I think, and, and I'll, some of those guys, as they continue through each week and it, it's fun to see each week, each day, each practice, each period through our practice, right. you see them getting better and you know, it, it becomes a confidence thing. And, yeah. and the more you do it, the more you do it, the better you are, and and the more confidence you have in doing your job, and and it's been fun for sure up front. As you move guys from offensive line to defensive line, uh, w what are some of the skills that sort of translate either way, or are there other things you look for specific to putting a guy on on the D line? Yeah, our D line guys, you know, really, I, I shouldn't say. There's a huge difference, but there's a little bit of difference. Sometimes, you know, um, uh, with, when you're talking offensive line, ideally, you know, that, that's a position you want to keep pretty consistent um, as they work together. With the D-line, um, some of those guys are playing both ways on that, and we'll, we'll get some time here and there, and we got guys that, that will spell them and, and, and work that through. Um, you know, sometimes being – you don't have to be a real big guy to be on the D-line, in my opinion – um, I think for us and our defense and some of the things that we do, it's, you know, sometimes just a little bit bigger linebacker um, that may have his hand on the ground, you know, and, and mm -hmm. speed and, um, and, and your versatility at that way and using what, what your tools that you have in your tool belt. Um, and it may not be the biggest guy, but he might be utilizing his quickness and his speed and his, his physicality um, as opposed to maybe – uh, size wise and and you know on one of the guys on our d line is is logan olson and and you know he's one of those guys that's y you look at the program he's not you know overly like you would think of a true d lineman or a a big o lineman he's type under, of guy right under two hundred right. but but his speed his he's twitchy off the football um you know and 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 looking forward to to seeing him out there as well yeah. and uh being one of those guys that that we kind of rotate through because that you know you 
once you're, it's, I feel it's important that, you know, when your O-line, you don't want your O-line and your D-line guys getting, getting tired and, and a rotation sometimes is needed. And, um, and our D-line has, has, has been, been doing a pretty good job of, of getting off the ball. Coach Daniels coaches our D-line um, and has really uh, transformed some of those guys into to, to crafting that piece there. And, you know, Cale Conway is another one that's, that's coming back uh, from last year as a sophomore that, that played on the field last year that we've got some experience from him. Um, you know, Cale has is, is a, a, been, been under the lights, been there, done that, and has worked, him spot, worked himself into a place of, of being back um, as a junior and, and getting on the football field and um, kind of through that rotation that we talked about. So I know one of the things that um, as we go through this year, and Mike's going to ask, so Black County doesn't have a one-legged quarterback this year. <laughs> I'm Arm. So, I, I do remember that leg. from last year. Well, I, I th- got me peg yeah. leg. <laughs> yeah. I thought he might want to bring that up. Um, so, yeah, you have to, like last week's score is, you never know with these all the stuff that's going on, who which players were playing. and. So Arkell score, South is a good football means, team. Yeah, yeah and yeah. score they, means nothing. They just but, moved them up to class five. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. class six now. Oh, Arkell yeah. South oh, is. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But we did get a question, and somebody asked, what happens to last week's game? It it, it obviously it was, was a, panicking that it was a loss, and I'm like, no, it's not a loss. Yeah, it it goes down as a no contest. It no game didn't, didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. So and you don't you won't make it up. Correct. So anyway, oh, that's too bad. I hate hearing yeah. that. Yeah. I yeah. did see that Fort Osage, by the way, who we were supposed to play, went up to St. Joe Central and just crushed them. Yeah, they just destroyed. It's them. a good football team. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk about our quarterback too. Uh, real quickly, and then let's well, let's move. We can move into what we know about Platte County, but let's talk about our quarterback this year. Yeah, Ian. Um, Ian Acosta. Ian Acosta. He's back. Um, <laughs> year three of him being a starter uh, on the football field last year. You know, he he played some quarterback. He played some slot for us. You know, he's a he's a another leader and on on the team that that you know guys gravitate to, and on the offensive side, you know whether you're a uh, you know, a team captain. He's he's another one of our team captains, and you know whether you're a uh, at the quarterback spot, whether you're named a team captain or earned that that piece, uh, you're a leader, and he does a great job of of rallying the troops together. He's got great energy. Um, he's smart. He's he's making the right reads. He's throwing the ball better. He's um, obviously he can he can run the football. He's 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 very you, versatile. You referred to him as his, a playmaker last yes, week. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, he that is. Sums I mean, it up. Yeah, and he makes things happen on the field. And you know, when he came in as a sophomore, being the starting quarterback as a sophomore, you know, he, he had a lot to learn that year and did a great yeah. job. And and each year he's gotten better. And um, and you've just seen him continue to rise up uh, each year and 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 kind of take charge of of the offense and you know he's 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 a fun one to watch for sure no doubt about it he's the kind of guy you just want to make sure he's got the ball in his hands yeah. i mean he's a terrific guy that to to play a you know, running that, back any it, any position right yeah. and, and with him at the quarterback spot he's done a good job this off season in um in the weight room and i always refer, i'm referring back to the weight room sure. again but i think for him um him realizing uh, his strength being such an important piece and you know uh, when I have him through the day, you know he, we got to work out quite a bit together and 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 put him through some workouts and he's 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 definitely season ready and um, excited to see him uh, go showcase what right. he's worked on all this you know in this off season and and step up and be that be that leader on the on the field and and get things done. Now, when you talk about these guys getting being prepared and doing the work over the yeah. summer, are are you in constant contact with these guys across the summer months? And how's that work? Yeah, so through the summer we are. I mean, like when we have our camp days and with mm-hmm. the weight room. So, um, I, yeah, you, you see them. I we mean, see you see them. Every- yeah. So, so yeah, in a way, yeah. there's, there's coaching there's going no, on. Yeah, because yeah, remember last year we had that thing. We talked a little bit about that two weeks ago on the show when they did the virtual. Remember they had oh, to gosh, work out yeah. in their yes. driveway yeah. and show yeah. video of them right. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, and it's been good. To, obviously, this summer was great to have everybody back. Um, right. You know, we're only allowed uh, twenty days for actual football stuff. Yeah, yeah that that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. So, it's just, so, it's so that beats up our camp. So early on this, this summer, beginning of June, we were at 
we had our camp here, and then we went up to team camp, and then we had a camp um, at the end of the end of uh, end of July, um, where we kind of finished out our football portion. And in between that is is weights, and you know you find out a lot about guys in the weight room, and and you know how hard they push themselves, how well do they, you know, are they able to go on their own and make sure they're doing what they need to do as and continue to get coached up, and are they pushing themselves and are they pulling their, those guys around them in with them to, to do the right things and to work hard in the weight room? And, you know, when we go run Dovecot Hill, and, and are, they, are they, you know, are they selling out and, and understanding that part? And, you know, that, that's where you kind of find out a lot about a team, I think. And right. At least a, a portion of it is how do they work in the summer? How do they work right. in the weight room? Because all that translates over to the football field, what you do in the weight room. It's, it's the little habits that you have there. Are you establishing good work habits? Are you, you know, are, they, are you skipping reps? Are you putting well, yeah. what you need to do on? I, I mean, I think there's a self motivation factor yeah. that, that you a lot of people don't think about. And you think about that with a, I don't know, a, a golfer, or a distance runner, or something like that. You, you know, it's it's you and nobody else. But right. in, in a team concept, you you don't always think about that self motivation factor. Yeah, and they're and and they're invested. I mean, and that's the thing that we try to do in the summers. We we put them through. Uh, it, it takes a lot to play the game of football, and mm-hmm. you've got to be in great shape. Yeah. And and the time invested, you know, now they can relate. Or I've busted, you know, I've worked hard. I've busted my my butt every, you know, I, the days we've got workouts, the days we're in the weight room, we're doing camp, we're doing all this practice, and, and, and you know, it's hot. I've invested a lot of myself into this team. By golly, I'm not going to go out on a Friday night and not give great effort. You know, I mean, right. th- there's a lot invested yes. in that, and that's that's what you want. You want that investment. You want those guys that are 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 committed mm-hmm. um, to themselves, committed to their teammates and to the program that they're going to go out there and they're not going to give up. And that's what I think we've got a great a great thing is is our guys invest a lot in it and they care and they and they want to do well and um, you know and that that it shows. You said some earlier. What's what's Dovecot Hill? It's a it's probably. The only hill in Kearney, maybe. It's a do, really steep you, hill. So something tells me you're not running down it's, it. We're not running well, down. Well, we, we jogged down the hill. Dove how, cut, how up the Dovecot. How, how far is oh, Dovecot geez. Hill? Maybe 200 yards, maybe 150 yards-ish. But, but you line up. So we line up down at the bottom yeah. of the hill, and, you know, different groups, we they sprint up the hill. And then it's set to go. This, this does not it's, sound appealing well, to me in any way. Uh, you're right. Some, you know, you find out a lot about it. Well, the mere fact that, that it, it has a name that everybody. Right. And, and I think there's a, yeah, you'd say Dove Cut. They all know well, what that is. Yeah. Say, and the mere fact that I don't know what it is tells you a lot about me. Well, maybe we could. No. Maybe some Saturday, so. no. you know. I'm real busy that day. We can <laughs> figure that out. Nope. We can I'm have good. you. But I challenge Mike Come to on. do it. I think I'll roll down the <laughs> How would that be? So it's the it's the it's the hill it's the uh, steep hill that is over on the south side of the junior high. Oh, oh! It, it takes off and goes up. Yeah, no. Okay, that, well, that, not that's gonna do it. That's yep. where it's at. I yep. can do it. All right. Well, because uh, usually on Saturday morning I'm at uh, Corner Cafe. Okay. Or <laughs> well, there. May, I was just that was just if you were available on a Saturday we no. could do that. Or, uh, what other day would be a good day that maybe we could get you out there and we could like we could put you through run that 15 times. That's what are you laughing at, Brian? We could get all three of you oh, to go over to Dovecot. Man. I would imagine the team would love to see it. Yeah, I'm can sure we, we will. Can we? We can maybe sell tickets. I know it's well. It's it could be a great fundraiser. Nah, it's going to be ugly. It, it would be. It would be ugly. I, it, yeah. No. Yeah. You never know. No, we do know. <laughs> we never know. It could be something that could be fun. Uh, I'm hearing right. some music Brian, now. What? Brian's trying to. We just got this. on. He's like, oh, oh, no. Oh, we just. What? We just seemed like we just started. Yeah. That's what happens when you're having a great time. Uh, uh, get ready for Platte County. It's going to be at Platte County, seven o'clock. Go yes, ahead, Jim. Real quick. Are there any, if somebody wants to go watch, are there any restrictions that you know of? No, no restrictions that I'm aware of okay. other than, you know, practice good social distancing right. and um, and all that. that but that, check the... Check probably uh, Black County's, Black County's website, website just to make sure. Yeah. Just to make sure. But yeah. as of now, no. Uh, no, sir. Masks, Excellent. do you know? Mask required? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I, okay. Again, okay. So in yeah. I, don't think, I don't think outs, outdoors. Yeah. Distancing, right. I, think I think, is the biggest right. piece. Yep. Okay. Coach, great having Keep you here. Healthy. Oh, you better believe it. Yep, I love it. Uh, great having you here today, and uh, good luck tomorrow night against Platte County. We can't wait. 
hope to see a big, fat victory. That's right. All right, good luck. Go Bulldogs. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week on the Coach Gray Show. Thanks for being with us.